guys, welcome back to another video. I'm pretty excited to talk about this topic because it has to do with game preservation and backwards compatibility. Literally just in my video yesterday, I was talking about how I hope Xbox continues to take part in backwards compatibility and kind of revitalize the program that seemingly has come to a halt from bringing games that you can actually play on your Xbox Series X from previous generations. A lot of that I believe has to do with the calculations of ROI with licensing and whether how many people are actually actually going to be playing these games that they bring to backwards compatibility and is it worth the time and effort all those things probably play into it but it is definitely a great feature that xbox does which is making sure that you can play your older xbox games in terms of providing goodwill and providing a better experience for gamers so well, there's an awesome article here that looks like it is coming back but before we get into it make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new here if you've been watching for a while and you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button i do make daily gaming content so if you like that type of stuff i would love to have you as a part of the channel so let's start off here exclusive xbox president sarah bond has set up a new team dedicated to game preservation and forward compatibility so this is sounding like one of the first big moves sarah bond has done in her new role as the xbox president and to me if she <laughs> continues to make decisions like this it'll be awesome to have her as xbox president so sarah bomb was promoted to xbox president a few short months ago and kickstarted something of a reorganization to streamline microsoft's gaming or to position itself for the future with activision blizzard now acquired xbox has become something of a gaming powerhouse with a huge platforms across xbox console and cloud pc gaming mobile titles and subscription services even when you disregard the millions of Xbox Game Pass subscribers, Microsoft counts various other subscription service gaming business within that fold from Fallout First to Minecraft Realms to World of Warcraft. So yeah, that's something actually I never really sat back and thought about. They have Xbox Game Pass, but then they also have all of these other subscriptions that they are taking money from that are part of now their first party studios. And I mean, World of Warcraft is going to be a massive one to add on to that people paying monthly to play that game and i wonder what they're going to do with world of warcraft are they going to ever bring that game to console i think it would be a very smart move so my fingers crossed is that they will be doing that now continues here the complexity of the xbox business is doubtless a huge challenge but there are similarly huge opportunities ahead of the firm to that end sarah bond recently sent out an email to rally her troops while also sharing some interesting bits of news in the process microsoft has confirmed to us that the correspondence is genuine so this is true this is not a rumor this is happening based off of this report it says it's been nearly six months since we came together as an organization. So this is her email that she sent out. Our collective achievements in that time frame are tremendous. Everyone should feel incredibly proud of what we've achieved and excited about the opportunities ahead. We are moving full speed ahead on our next generation of hardware. So any doubts of Xbox creating hardware in the future can now even though they should have been squashed a long time ago, I mean they told us they were making new hardware, now can officially be squashed from reading this email. She says, focused on delivering the biggest technological leap ever in a generation. So the biggest we've ever seen going from the Series X and S to whatever they call that next generation of Xbox. And that's exciting because you sit back and I think well, I sit back at least and I think about these generations. And to me, the biggest leap that I can notice from just my eyes, just from looking at the screen, was when we went from the OG Xbox to the Xbox 360, that huge leap in just overall fidelity, getting into the HD gaming era. I remember walking into Future Shop, which is now Best Buy in Canada, and they had Fight Night on the screen. And it was just insane comparing Fight Night on the 360 versus Fight Night on the OG Xbox. That was a huge graphical leap. But they're saying this is going to be the biggest technological leap in a generation. And we'll see how that kind of translates into how the games look and play eventually when that console does come out. Now, it says here, Sarah also touched upon Microsoft's innovations in gaming AI understood to be a big part of Microsoft's vision for the future of Xbox, which is something we continuously are hearing first with a chatbot. And then them wanting to expand AI out into actually developing more games and getting utilizing the technology to make games more immersive. It says here, we were recently told that departing XM Tech lead and AI innovator Kareem Chowdhury, which is what we talked about yesterday, was known within the org for putting players and developers first. And it seems that influence will continue driving Microsoft's thought processes on the tech. 
So Sarah Bond says this, we are innovating in gaming AI focused on delivering player first, developer first value for discovery, engagement, and creator velocity. It says further in Sarah, further in Sarah describes how Microsoft is continuing its work to integrate Activision Blizzard games and battle.net into Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass. That will be something super interesting to see what they do with the Battle.net accounts and whether they're going to keep that going or eventually start to phase that out where you get all your access to your Blizzard stuff via an Xbox subscription or an Xbox Game Pass subscription or just an Xbox account. Says Microsoft brought Diablo 4 to the Xbox Game Pass a short while ago in collaboration with the Microsoft Store platform team over the Windows side. Uh, Bond revealed that as a result of Diablo hitting Game Pass, Xbox has now become the number one platform for the game. She says, we are integrating Activision Blizzard King titles into our services. We launched Diablo 4 into Game Pass and Xbox has quickly become the number one platform for Diablo 4 players and sarah bond reiterates some of the other games on the horizon for xbox saying we are integrating with battle.net all while launching call of duty wars on mobile and preparing for the upcoming hellblade 2 avowed and indiana jones and the great circle so it just from that alone you, you kind of see just the insane amount of games that are coming over from xbox first party into game pass and where people are going to be able to access them again they're integrating with battle.net but I wonder if they will eventually make a switch because you're not getting achievements from playing these games via Xbox Game Pass on PC. And for some people that may not matter, but I think for a lot of people out there, if they have an Xbox account and they play on console and they play on PC, they want that everywhere experience. They want to be able to collect achievements on every single game, no matter what device that they are playing on. And it continues here. It says, in recent times, the preservation of games has become an increasing concern. Uh, for me, absolutely. It's been an increasing concern as we're moving forward into the all digital era as someone who still likes his physical games and still buys physical games. And there's also a major misconception out there where people, I used to think this as well, even if you go back to my videos from the start of this generation, but I realized looking further into it, it isn't fully true is that people believe that these games that you do buy via a physical copy are all just keys to unlock the game from the digital store when in fact there are actually quite a few games that have the entire game on the disc there is a website called does it play and it breaks down every game pretty much that has the full game on the physical disc itself and whether you actually need online access to play those games and there is a, a list that is growing and that we see especially obviously smaller games where you can actually just buy the game physically and have it so you'll always have that game in your collection it says here as the shift to digital licensing models and online services has made it too easy for games to go permanently offline it's a particularly large problem in mobile gaming where publishers and companies like Apple and Google have no problem wiping games from existence. Even core platforms like Nintendo are known to shut down stores, offlining tons of games in the process. Microsoft itself is closing part of the Xbox 360 store this year for new purchases, although many hundreds of the most popular Xbox backwards compatible games managed to escape the Xbox 360 and continue to live on across the Xbox One, the Series X and S platforms. And it seems that now they'll live on even further. And this to me is the great news here, something that I've really always been hoping that they would continue to do. And it is the backwards compatibility. So in her email to her team, Sarah Bond reveals that Microsoft has now set up a dedicated team to ensure the future proofing of the current Xbox game library against future hardware paradigm shifts, ensuring that our games remain accessible long into the future. So awesome to hear. She says, we have formed a new team dedicated to game preservation, important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself. We are building on our strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players, and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of Xbox games for future generations of players to enjoy. So it's great to hear they are not giving up on this backwards compatibility. In my opinion, Xbox is the company that is that does this the best. I mean, they have really kicked off making sure that these games are preserved when they started bringing the OG and the 360 available to the Xbox One X and, and then to the Xbox Series X and S. So it's great that they are going to continue with this going forward because as somebody who has a large back catalog of games wants to be able to play these games, wants to be able to play them on future hardware where they may get some slight upgrades just from the hardware being more powerful, 
this is something that is extremely consumer friendly in my opinion. It says here, sources tells us that Microsoft may have more to share publicly in this area around the annual Xbox showcase. And we're also hearing now that the Xbox showcase is expected to take place on June 9th. There was a leak, I guess, essentially, or some information that came out that the Xbox showcase is coming on June 9th and they're going to have a bunch of games like Gears and uh, Indiana Jones. And uh, just they're saying it's going to be an incredible showcase. And I mean, if we're hearing about all the games now, this may be the earliest that uh, I've ever seen the showcase completely get leaked or spoiled or the information get out about what is to come. Not that it really matters uh, because we know most of the games that they are going to be showing off and talking about, but there will probably be some surprises that hopefully don't get spoiled before the showcase actually hits. Now, Sarah Bond also pays tribute to Kareem Chowdhury, who's retiring from Microsoft after 26 years at the firm. So yesterday, we didn't really know what happened, why he was leaving. It wasn't anything nefarious, but whether he was going to another company and found a new opportunity, but it looks like now he is just retiring from Xbox. It says earlier this week at the goodbye party for Kareem Chowdhury, a longtime leader in Xbox, we shed stories about the obstacles we've overcome and the incredible things this team has done. As I was listening to those stories, I realized that Team Xbox embodies those same three qualities. So he's retiring. So good luck to him in the future. And then it continues, it ends off here saying, I recently outlined some of the pain points Microsoft will have to overcome in a large essay I penned last week. One of the concerns I have pertained specifically to what might happen to our digital libraries in a universe where publishers seek growth at the expense of the console. Not only does it sound as though Microsoft has no plans to throw in the towel when it comes to gaming hardware, but it sounds as though Microsoft is preparing to ensure that no matter what happens, we should be able to maintain access to our Xbox games long term. And again, phenomenal to hear this. And the other question is, as an ecosystem, as they do expand out, they're probably thinking about how can we make sure that people can have access to their entire library, whether it's on a handheld, whether it's on a console, whether it's on their phone via cloud gaming and all of these different ways that if you do have older games in your in your catalog that aren't part of that current generation, you'll still be able to play those no matter what device you are on. To me, again, which is why the Xbox ecosystem is the best one out there right now in the console space as they're doing things like this and continuing to do that going forward is very, is very encouraging and exciting for me as somebody who loves older video games. It says, I know that, that Microsoft is quite proud of Windows backwards compatibility capabilities, considering you could run games from the 80s via MS-DOS without issues. And I also know that Microsoft wants to make sure Xbox is known for a similar dedication to preservation. Sarah Bond touched upon the challenges facing the wider games industry as gaming hours are increasingly concentrated around a handful of so-called black hole titles like Fortnite, Roblox, Call of Duty, where players get increasingly reluctant to try something new. And the console market has also shrunk overall since its peak in 2008, leaving platform holders wondering where the next generation of growth is going to come from as costs continue to increase. And uh, Sarah Bond says this, at a time when the gaming industry's growth is flattening, our, ours continues, noting that and emphasizing Microsoft's ability to diversify and pivot, which is something we see them doing that they have been able to do, especially after the Xbox One generation with the whole subscription-based services. And now we are seeing that they're being followed here specifically by PlayStation, who is doing very similar things, opening up their ecosystem they created a better PlayStation Plus service, which to be honest is a, is a good service if you just want a bunch of good games to play with a single subscription fee. PlayStation Plus isn't a, a bad option. And they also are, have tacked on that backwards compatibility with PS4 games. And it makes me wonder, are they going to look further into backwards compatibility for multiple generations, PS2, PS3, PS4, even PS1 with the next upcoming PlayStation if they are seeing here that Xbox is going to make sure that they provide that service to their customers. And my hopes are that this type of competition breeds that from all of the different platform holders out there. And the PS6 gives you full backwards compatibility across its entire generations of consoles. And finally, it says Microsoft's knack for diversification has helped it leapfrog Apple to retake the world's most valuable company crown. Xbox has now become bigger than Windows itself, a fact that might have seemed impossible 10 years ago. Huge challenges remain, but like I said, similarly, huge opportunities are presenting themselves too. So that's the article. I think there's a lot of good 
from this article, all of excitement, at least from, from my perspective, to see kind of where they are going with the game preservation. You can see that they are definitely trying to make an ecosystem that you can play your entire catalog of Xbox across every generation on really any device. And again, she confirms for all the naysayers out there who believe the Xbox console is going away. She confirms here again that they are focused on the next generation of hardware, which will be the biggest technical leap ever in a generation. Again, whatever that means, because we will have to see the actual platform, the actual console in action when it does come out. But definitely exciting. And I wonder if we will hear anything more about this at the showcase that is coming in June. But I want the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.